Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Lads. So in this video this week, I've got for you a Thrawn reading guide slash watching guide. We're going to talk about all of Thrawn's appearances throughout both Legends and Canon and how you can read the most essential stuff, watch the most essential stuff and be ready for his appearance in Ahsoka in August. Before we do so, make sure you're hitting that like button, you're subscribing to the channel and you're commenting below and letting me know what you thought of this video. Of course, your likes and subscriptions will really help us out and they help our channel grow, which will allow us to do a lot more stuff on this channel. Make sure you're hitting that like button and subscribing. So for Thrawn, I'm going to give you a starting point and we're gonna start before we talk about legends or canon, we're just gonna start with the Thrawn trilogy. The Thrawn trilogy, I think, is the starting point no matter where you go with Thrawn whether it's an all legends journey, an all canon journey, or both, the Thrawn trilogy should be your starting point. Now, I must mention that the Thrawn trilogy is considered legends, but with the heir to the empire name drop, which is the name of the first novel in the trilogy in the Ahsoka trailer, these books seem like they are going to be the basis for a lot of the story they are going to be adapting for Thrawn, the overarching narrative, and everything about the New Republic era at this time. Of course, that means reading Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. Thrawn is the main villain of all three of them, and everything about Thrawn stems from his first appearance in these novels. So even though these books are legends, I still do recommend you read them, even if you are going into canon. If you're interested in continuing with Thrawn's story in Star Wars Legends, we're going to talk about that now. Now, there are two directions you can go with Thrawn in Legends. You can go before the Thrawn trilogy, or you can go with the legacy of Thrawn post the Thrawn trilogy. Personally, I would say you start with the material before the Thrawn trilogy because it builds up a lot of his character and a lot of the reasons why his legacy matters. We'll start here with the Timothy Zahn novel that came out in 2006 called Outbound Flight. Outbound Flight told the story of the Outbound Flight project as well as Thrawn's first contact with people from known space. Outbound Flight lays the foundation for a lot of what Zahn's mythology ultimately becomes in the rest of Legends, as well as a lot of the ideas he ultimately brings to canon. Things about the Chiss Ascendancy, the Chiss Ascendancy hierarchy and class structure, the Chiss Expansionary Defense Force, Thrawn's origins, his brother Mithrasophis, as well as characters like Jorah Sabaoth, who ultimately become very important into the Thrawn slash Timothy Zahn mythology. This is arguably the most important book outside of the Thrawn trilogy to read if you are interested in learning the story of Grand Admiral Thrawn, so I highly recommend you read this next. The next essential Thrawn story that you should read if you are trying to make your way through Thrawn and Legends is Mist Encounter. Mist Encounter is a short story written by Timothy Zahn and illustrated by Doug Schuler for Star Wars Adventure Journal No. 7, published by West End Games in 1995. It was later reprinted in the Outbound Flight paperback in 2007, with changes made to accommodate the story that Zahn told there. Mist Encounter tells the story of the Empire discovering Thrawn during his exile from the Chiss Ascendancy. It's a story that was very similarly adapted into Timothy Zahn's first Thrawn novel in canon, and has become an essential piece of Thrawn's journey from Chiss Ascendancy to the Empire. Thrawn does appear as an antagonist in Empire at War Forces of Corruption, the expansion to the Empire at War video game. He also makes an appearance in Rebel Force Target. I personally would not consider either of these appearances essential for you as you're making your way through Thrawn's history, but they are two full appearances from the character, and if you would like to be a completionist, you would next look at these two. After that, his next big novel appearance would be in Choices of One, also written by Timothy Zahn. Thrawn has a pretty big role in Choices of One, but Choices of One itself is a sequel to previously Allegiance. There are a lot of pieces of information about Thrawn and Choices of One, including things that he is doing during the time of the original trilogy. So that does make this book semi-essential for when you're reading Thrawn. However, since Thrawn is not in the previous book and you kind of need the previous book to read this, I would not label Choices of One as absolutely essential for Thrawn's story, but I would say if you have the time, 
I think you should read Choices of One. Next, Thrawn does make an appearance in one of the Galaxy of Fear Jr. novels. This is the eighth book called The Swarm. Similarly, Thrawn appears in the video game TIE Fighter, but these two appearances I would not classify as essential. The next essential thing you should read is Crisis of Faith. This is a novella written by Timothy Zahn that was attached to the Heir to the Empire 20th anniversary edition. And finally, Thrawn's last appearance up to Heir to the Empire is in the novel Tatooine Ghost. Tatooine Ghost was written by Troy Denning and is the final book that leads up to the Thrawn trilogy in the timeline. So if you want to see exactly what Thrawn was doing right before Heir to the Empire, Tatooine Ghost is for you. As I mentioned earlier, Thrawn's legacy transcends the Thrawn trilogy into a lot of what Legends is built on. The Thrawn trilogy being the foundation for Star Wars Legends means that Thrawn has his fingerprints on almost every story told across Legends. He's mentioned countless times in Legends stories, but these are some of his biggest mentions where he doesn't necessarily appear, but a lot of story for him is added here that leaves a legacy that is far greater than if you hadn't read these things. The expansion of Thrawn's legacy would begin with Timothy Zahn's next two Star Wars novels that he wrote, the Hand of Thrawn duology, beginning with Spectre of the Past and ending with Vision of the Future. Thrawn is not featured directly in these novels, but the entire story is based on Thrawn's legacy. This was Zahn's return to Star Wars, where he fixes a ton of things that went wrong with other authors during the 90s and provides cappers for a lot of his characters as he transitions them out of a lot of the muddled, repetitive storytelling that was the Bantam era. We also see a ton of tidbits of information where he begins to expand a lot of the ideas he initially set up in the Thrawn trilogy. We see he looks at planets where Thrawn held sway, secret bases that Thrawn had, disciples that Thrawn had that we didn't even know about, and one of the first real looks at Thrawn's life outside of the Empire, his people the Chiss, and the reasons why Thrawn was so heavily involved in the Empire. Even though Thrawn is not in these novels, I would say these are essential reads. They are Timothy Zahn, and they provide a ton of legacy for the character. And finally, the Capper Timothy Zahn novel to all of this was Survivor's Quest. Survivor's Quest was written after the Hand of Thrawn duology and provides another epilogue story to Thrawn's journey. Again, Thrawn is not featured in this novel, but his legacy is continued to be furthered. And it also provides a ton of information about the Outbound Flight Project far before Timothy Zahn ever wrote that novel. I would say this is an essential novel to read if you are getting into the legacy of Thrawn. To reiterate, Thrawn has been mentioned in nearly every Star Wars book, so I'm not going to continue to go over all the times he was mentioned or all the times one little thing that he did in the past was added to the lore. However, the last piece of information that I'm not going to say is essential for you to read, but the concept itself is kind of essential for you to know, and that is The New Jedi Order. The New Jedi Order is a 19 book long series and a publishing initiative by Lucasfilm, starring of course Luke's New Jedi Order, a lot of the Legends characters, and being a big culmination of that storytelling from the 90s. Zahn uses a lot of the Hand of Thrawn duology to set up the events of the New Jedi Order, and therefore Thrawn's fingerprints are all over the events of what happened here. We get explanations for a lot of Thrawn's fanaticism with outside forces, threats to his people, the Chiss Ascendancy, and reasons for why he joined the Empire in the first place. The Yuuzhan Vong invasion is a threat that directly relates to those reasons and therefore is important to Thrawn's legacy. Now I'm not going to make you read all 19 of these books, but I think just the concept in general, a quick Wikipedia read of what this series is about, will give you a good idea of why Thrawn was so important in the events leading up to this. Okay, so that's Star Wars Legends. So now to shift over to Star Wars canon, the stuff that will be included in the Ahsoka series, the stuff that the Ahsoka series will have to respect when it comes to Thrawn storytelling. Thrawn has only appeared in three different types of Star Wars storytelling in canon prior to Ahsoka. First, I would recommend you start with Star Wars Rebels. Thrawn's first appearance in canon was in Star Wars Rebels, and he does appear in Seasons 3 and 4 as the main antagonist. The initial characterization for Thrawn is all established here, and a lot of what made him special in Legends is brought over. It's also the first appearance of Lars Mikkelsen as Thrawn, who has been confirmed to be playing him in live action. He does the voice for Thrawn in the animated series as well. If there's one thing besides the Thrawn trilogy that I think is absolutely essential for you to watch or read if you're going into Ahsoka, it's of course Star Wars Rebels. Not only because Thrawn is involved in that story, but Ahsoka Tano, Ezra Bridger, Sabine Wren, and Harrison Dula are all confirmed to be in the show, and they are some of the main characters of Star Wars Rebels. 
We also just recently got a Zeb Aurelios appearance in The Mandalorian, so you can't count out an appearance by him in Ahsoka as well. So now switching over to novels, Thrawn first appeared in the novel Thrawn, which was created in conjunction with Star Wars Rebels Season 3. Timothy Zahn worked directly with Dave Filoni, trying to match the storytelling between the character in his novel and the character that was on screen. Thrawn tells the story of Mithron Naroto's discovery by the Empire, as retold from Mist Encounter, his rise through the ranks of the Imperial Academy, the impression that he leaves on Imperial officers, and the bonds he builds while in the Academy with people like Eli Banto. Zahn uses this as the foundation for most of the lore that he eventually expands upon throughout his other five Thrawn novels, so this is probably the most essential first read of any Thrawn novel in canon. Zahn follows up that novel with two other Thrawn novels, which have been considered a loose Thrawn canon trilogy, although these novels were not written to be a trilogy like the original Thrawn trilogy were. The next novel being Thrawn Alliances, which pairs a story of Thrawn working with Darth Vader during the year before A New Hope, with the story of Thrawn meeting Anakin Skywalker back during the Clone Wars. Alliances provides a lot of early insight into what Zahn's vision was for the Chiss Ascendancy, as well as how Zahn saw Thrawn existing throughout the galaxy during the time of the Skywalker saga. The next novel, Thrawn Treason, also written by Timothy Zahn, was written in conjunction with Star Wars Rebels Season 4. Thrawn is absent from Season 4 for a few episodes, and this book tells you exactly what he was doing during that time. Treason tries to tie together the best of both worlds for Thrawn. It continues to flesh out his history as well as his relationship with different parts of the Chiss Ascendancy people in the Chiss Ascendancy like Admiral Aralani, and furthers the story of characters like Eli Vanto. Even though Treason takes place in a short amount of time, it is an essential novel though for what Zahn has set up for the future of Thrawn. Threat of the Grisks that is incoming is paramount and has been established more fully in the Ascendancy trilogy, but it begins here. This is also the last insight we get into Thrawn's head right before his disappearance in Star Wars Rebels, so a lot of his plans and desires and ideas are shown here before he disappears for the next 10 years and we see him in the Ahsoka series. That then leaves us with the Thrawn Ascendancy Trilogy. The Ascendancy Trilogy adapts a lot of the legends origins of Thrawn, but this time fully expanding on the Chiss hierarchy, the class system, the family structure, and the military structure, giving us a much wider variety of Chiss characters with many different types of personalities and really establishing a sub-universe within the Star Wars universe. It's an excellent trilogy, and I highly recommend you read it, but if you want to know the canon origins of Thrawn, this is where you would read them. And the very last thing you can check out for Thrawn is just purely his mention in The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 13, The Jedi. Ahsoka name drops him at the end of the episode. And that is it. That's all we get from Thrawn so far in live action until we see him in the trailer for Ahsoka. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, hit that like button if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel. Comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Hopefully you enjoy your reading journey slash watching playing journey for Thrawn if you were going to do everything I mentioned here. Thrawn is one of the most important characters in Star Wars history, not only for perpetuating the franchise in the 90s when it was all but dead, but just for being a completely different type of villain than we had seen before. A calculating, manipulative Imperial that we had never seen the likes of in the films. I cannot wait to see Thrawn in live action. If you're interested in other Thrawn videos, I have many more up here on the channel, including my thoughts on how you could adapt the Thrawn trilogy very directly into the Mandalorian Ahsoka. I'll be doing an update of that when Ahsoka comes out and we can see what story points they have added. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.